Welcome to the Binge Breakers Podcast. I'm Jacqueline. I am here to teach you how I overcame bulimia and my binge eating disorder and how you can too. Through simple steps of mind management, repairing your relationship with yourself, understanding your habits, and intuitive eating. Disclaimer, this recording is not intended to be utilized as medical advice or a medical diagnosis. If you think you're in need of medical attention or treatment, please seek it immediately. This recording will also contain sensitive subjects such as binging and purging, weight and depression. Please listen at your own discretion and do what you think is best for you. Hello everyone, how are you doing? Good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you're at in the world. Um, Welcome to the podcast. So today, we're going to be talking about Thanksgiving. Woo! Actually, not all of you guys celebrate Thanksgiving. It's a very American thing and it's kind of silly in a lot of ways because <laughs> there's so much background to Thanksgiving, but really what it's become, of course, is sitting around eating a bunch of turkey and stuffing and watching American football. But nonetheless, it's happening in America, the good old USA next week. Now, two things of note. One, if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, um, that's okay. Just whenever I say Thanksgiving or holidays, interchange that with big party. Big party with lots of fun food and family members that pressure you with food. And that will suffice because that is basically what's going to happen next Thursday for us Americans. So keep that in mind. And then secondly, this podcast has a whole series that I did last year on Thanksgiving and the holidays and has so many jam-packed episodes. I did a whole holiday series that goes over lots of different things people struggle with over the holidays. So go and check that out if you haven't already. It's not just this episode that will come out, but if you are like, oh my God, I'm feeling anxiety about the holidays, go check that out. That'll be really helpful for you. Today, I'm going to go dive back into that because it's been a year since I did those episodes. I've learned new things. I'm of course going to repeat some topics, but I think that's a good thing. Sometimes we need extra reminders. I need to hear things at least, I forget what the actual statistic is, but you need to hear things a lot before they actually sink in. And so I can be the little reminder person for you, but I'm going to have a new twist on it as well. Firstly, though, if you want to go skip ahead, I have a few announcements to make. So you can skip ahead like five, four or five minutes is usually what it takes me. Um, But one and then that will get to the episode. But one is I was a guest on a podcast that just came out um, Wednesday, November 17th. So it just came out, but you're listening on Friday. That was on Marcus Kane's podcast, the M. Kane coaching podcast with moi, with me, Jacqueline Davis. So you can check that out. Marcus and I, we always have good conversations. He was on the podcast a few weeks ago, actually, as a guest on here. We talked all about, like, we got nerdy about our fitness exercise regimens and talked about recovery and um, what it's like to maintain a healthy balance with health and fitness after recovery. But we talk about how you can actually have that in recovery. You don't have to give it all up and how to have a balance. So that was a great conversation. Go check him out. Give him some love. Secondly, I wanted to do another podcast highlight. This has nothing to do with me or my podcast or guests I've been with, but I just think I'm a podcast junkie. I love looking for, I I don't love looking for different podcasts, but I like listening to a lot of podcasts. So usually the best podcasts I've found are from people that have recommended it. But I know what I tend to do is I tend to listen to the same podcast over and over and over again. And that can kind of make me narrow-minded, totally guilty of it. And that's because it takes effort to look for new podcasts. So whenever I find a new podcast, I try to share it with people. And I think that'd be something just nice to do here on the podcast. So um, that being said, a lot of you guys struggle with panic attacks and anxiety. Uh, I know a lot of my clients do, um, especially sometimes you find that when people struggle to, when they stop binging and purging, they start experiencing panic attacks. It's a real thing that happens and anxiety attacks are actually two different things, but nonetheless, they happen. And so I have been listening to this podcast for a while by Dr. Caroline Leaf and her podcast is called Cleaning Up the Mental Mess. And she has an excellent podcast episode. It's called episode 93 called How to Deal with Panic Attacks. And she goes over in detail 
all of the different um, modalities that are happening when you actually have a panic attack, what's going on in your body, why it's so scary, why it's so terrifying, why they can keep on happening. And then she goes over real clear examples and strategies for how to actually deal with that and cope and get better and recover from that, how to deal with a panic attack, and hopefully how to make panic attacks kind of go away over time. So I just wanted to throw that out there. There's no real reason other than I think it would be helpful to a lot of people. I just came across that episode this week as I was sort searching for resources for a client who's struggling with panic attacks. So check that episode out if you are struggling. I think you'll really enjoy it. That's Dr. Caroline Leaf. And it's the podcast is how to clean up the mess. And then it's also episode 93, how to deal with panic attacks. And lastly, before we get it started, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you guys that have supported the show Um, those of you guys that are new listeners and those of you guys that are OG listeners that started when I was recording this in my apartment closet on the floor, um, (laughs) because it was the best place for sound. Just, just thank you so much. I appreciate it. And this podcast wouldn't be here without you. Thank you for those of you guys that have written reviews that have DM me on Instagram that have, um, supported this podcast or shared it with others. I really appreciate, appreciate that. It helps me out and it helps the podcast get seen more when you do that. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I cannot thank you enough because I literally don't know exactly when you're doing it. I don't know you, but I know you're out there doing it and you're out there listening. So thank you. And thank you for just listening because not only is it helping you, but it helps me. So I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. And last, 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 last bonus thing is that I actually am making podcast worksheets now. Um, We'll see. I don't know how helpful they'll be, but I I know that when I actually take notes and reflect on things, I learn 200 times more than what I would have if I was just passively listening. Passively listening is great. If you can just, all you can do and make time for is listening to a podcast, that's amazing. I do that all the time and I still learn so much and I grow so much from that. So I'm not trying to diss anyone that just listens to podcasts. I get that life is busy, but if you want to take it a step further, you're really serious about your recovery and you are trying to make the most out of these resources, then try, try, you can download this worksheet that I've created this kind of like go along with the podcast notes, um, in the, uh, podcast description below, you can download that and it'll help you take the podcast episode just a little bit deeper with some reflection. So, um, you'll actually write it down and I find that to be helpful in me taking in information. Plus then you have it to reflect on for when Thanksgiving comes up, you can actually go through the worksheet again. Okay. I think I have spoken enough. Let's get to the episode. Okay. So I have a whole list of things to go over in this episode. I'm just going to do it like rapid fire. So it may seem like I'm jumping from subject to subject. That's because I'm trying to give you like fire hose advice for Thanksgiving and the holidays up to come uh, that are up and coming. But the biggest thing I can give you, and it's going to sound like it's such a cheesy thing. I always do that but it is probably the most important. The rest of them aren't in any particular order, but you got to believe that you can actually do it. Um, And even more important than that, because you may not believe that you can actually do it. You need to at least be willing to believe that it's a possibility that you can actually have an enjoyable Thanksgiving next week. And you actually may not binge and it actually might be a good time with your friends, your family, whoever you're spending that time with, and might be enjoyable with the food. You might actually feel perfectly satisfied and not eat the whole like extra pies that are left over. So often what we do, what can cause binging really is the fear and anticipation of it. Um, And if you actually listen to that episode I recommended about from Dr. Caroline Leaf, the panic attack, she said, it's funny because when people have panic attacks, then they experience fear of more panic attacks, which then can perpetuate panic attacks because they're more stressed, they're more anxious. Um, The same exact concept applies to binging. Once you've binged, you fear binging. Look, If you binge on Thanksgiving day, that is the worst that's going to happen. Binge and purge. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to hurt you. You're not doing anything evil or wrong. You're just using food in a specific way that's not helping you long-term. I know I've said it a million times, but there's really nothing to fear. And I know food can be so terrifying. And I know it seems so easy for me because I'm recovered. I'm no longer struggling with food, but I promise you, The worst that you have to fear is binging again and then purging again, if that's what you do. You know, it's no place that you haven't been before and you've survived it many a times. The worst part about it isn't the binging, it's the guilt that you you put on yourself, the shame that you put on yourself 
all that sort of stuff. I want to let, give you permission for this Thanksgiving to be able to make mistakes, to accidentally overeat, to, if you binge that, that even that is okay. It's of course something that you not, don't want to do, but it's not the end all be all. It doesn't mean you're going to continue this forever. It doesn't mean that you are a lost cause. It just means that you're someone who was at a party with lots of food, struggling with an eating disorder, and that habit kicked in. That's all it means. But that being said, do not go into this thing already giving up. Do not go into it thinking, I'm not even going to try because we all know what happens. If you think like that, there's no way you're going to ever improve. There's no way you're going to ever even remotely get past it. How are you even going to be able to try and learn if you constantly think that's all I'm good for? That's, that's, it's just bound to happen. I know that you're thinking that because you get so much evidence from your past of like, well, look, Jacqueline, every other Thanksgiving, this is what happened. How can I believe anything else? And what I want to offer is that you have done so many things in your life that you were never able to do before. And you didn't just, because you were never able to do them, you didn't just give up. Like going through school, there was no guarantee. A lot of you guys are, you've gone through high school, you've gone through college, you've gotten gotten your dream jobs. There's something in your life that you didn't know if it was possible. You've never achieved it before. And yet you kept on going in that direction until it actually came true. And then you could believe it was possible when it was actually a reality, right? So you don't need to necessarily believe that it's possible. You don't need to believe that it's actually going to happen. You don't need to be sure that it's going to happen. That you're going to get through Thanksgiving without binging, without having an awful time. Um, but what you do need to believe is that it's actually possible because all those other things that you accomplished without actually knowing if they'd come true, the belief you had was that I think it's possible for me. Therefore, I'm going to keep on trying, even though there's no guarantee that it will actually happen. And then eventually it happened. So that's kind of the attitude you need to take into Thanksgiving. If you go in there thinking just a lost cause, I'm not even going to try. Why even bother? It happens every year. Don't be surprised if then of course the same thing happens every year. It's total, it's a total self-projection, right? Self-fulfilling prophecy. Please, please try. What I might suggest is that you actually write down what evidence do you have to the contrary of your current belief. Your current belief system is I can't do it. I'm a failure. I'm totally going to binge. There's no other way. You need to look for evidence as to why you actually could do it and challenge yourself in that way. It's so easy. I get a lot of comments on Instagram with people being like, I'm just a, I'm just a lost cause. I can't do it. I mean, that's cool, but that's awesome that you're able to do it, but it'll never be me. That mindset, I've been there. It's a really low place to be, but you actually need to realize that that thinking is just your thoughts. It's not actually the reality. And you're, when you keep on thinking that way, you're perpetuating that reality. Thoughts aren't everything. Changing your thoughts aren't everything to do with Thanksgiving. I know what you're thinking being like, oh, great. The only thing she's telling me is change my thoughts, but I will get to practical advice, but your thoughts are the foundation for so much of your reality. And you really need to take that seriously. I didn't take it seriously for a long time. And that left me spinning in depression and existential crises in um, not really wanting to live anymore. That sort of situation It was a horrible place to be and tons of binging. You have to actually start changing, recognizing those thoughts, realizing that those thoughts don't have to keep on continuing and that you actually have some control over what you think next, despite those thoughts. So anyway, I think I've harped on that enough, but th that's the top advice I have for you for Thanksgiving and in all events and your, in your recovery. It's the most important thing ever. Secondly, do not starve yourself beforehand. I know, I know the, the why people do this. They think, okay, I know for sure I want to eat a lot of food or I'm going to eat a lot of food or I don't want to gain weight. Therefore, what I'll do is I just won't eat the whole morning. I will try not to eat the week before. I'll try to go like really low calorie this week so that I can have um, some wiggle room, some buffer room for Thanksgiving and eat all the food that I want. Um, but then they also simultaneously are like, hopefully I just have a moderate meal and I don't binge, but there's room if I do. The problem with starving yourself beforehand or restricting yourself beforehand is that first of all, it's making you 
crazy hungry. It's making you very hungry. It's making your cravings worse. It's making you much more sensitive to food smells, to food, um, to like the taste of it, to wanting that. It's kicking your survival skills and instincts into overdrive. It's making you weaker and weaker when it comes to urges. And it's going to make you more likely to justify binging because, hey, I haven't been eating all day. I haven't eaten this whole week might as well do this totally excusable right because i haven't done anything and it's kind of like it makes sense in that moment especially when you're not thinking clearly your brain doesn't have enough nutrients all that's going to go in starving yourself really really sets you up for failure for thanksgiving it's much better to eat a proper meal beforehand and I know what you're thinking there. And I'm going to say this a lot. I'm just assuming everything you're thinking. If you're out there listening and you're like, Jacqueline, that's not what I'm thinking. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm assuming your thoughts. I know you have different thoughts than me. But what I am trying to say is that some people think, um, well, if I eat beforehand, I'm still going to eat anyway. Give it a chance. At least try. Um, if you are so resistant to it, I want you to at least try eating a proper meal beforehand, proper meals beforehand, depending on when you're having Thanksgiving dinner or whatever, or lunch. My family, what typically happens is that we'll eat Thanksgiving dinner around one or two, we just kind of have a late lunch, and then we'll have a brunch in the morning, and then we'll just have leftovers later for dinner if we're hungry again then. But it's usually just like one big massive meal. And so what I would always do is I would starve myself the entire morning, try to make it till one or two, crazy binge out um, for Thanksgiving, eat way too much, and then keep on eating throughout the day, even though I was already full and then later purge if I could, right? That would be kind of my whole Thanksgiving day. What would have been much better for me to do is actually eat a proper breakfast whenever I got up, despite the fact that even if I wasn't hungry, it would still it would have served me to just have a breakfast, have like some protein, some fat, some carbs, some vegetables, make it well-rounded, make it actually nourishing food for yourself. Don't just have sugar for breakfast because that's gonna make you crash hard and crave more and make you all sorts of messed up. And then even I, I could have eaten before um, the meal, maybe like an hour before or something, like have something else. And that sounds totally contradictory because it's like, eat more food, are you insane? But what it does is it, it actually helps you not feel hungry because you actually don't need the food. And therefore, when you are faced with the food, you're not insanely craving something. You actually feel quite satisfied and you still try something and you still indulge and you still eat, even if you're not super hungry because it's good food in front of you, but you don't eat like a ravenous beast. And that is probably the biggest win for it. And it may be you're going to eat a little extra that day, but it's Thanksgiving. It's a party. It's one day. You're allowed to do that. You're allowed to do that however often you want, but you have to keep in mind that you're not going to gain crazy amounts of weight from this one day and you will be okay. And it's not like this day is going to perpetuate over over days and days and days and days. That's what you think it means. One day, one meal is not going to ruin you. And you have to catch yourself when you're thinking that. Really question yourself logically. Does that make sense? Why do you think that's true? If you had to argue for the other side, why would that actually not be true? I promise you, if you're, if you're starving yourself beforehand, if you're restricting beforehand, do not be surprised if you binge. Do not be surprised if you lose control or you feel like you lose control um, at the Thanksgiving dinner table because you have literally set up the situation to happen and you made it 10 times more difficult for yourself not to binge, whether it, and rather you had just properly fed yourself um, meals and good nutrition and made yourself set up and maybe even also to take it a step further go for a walk in the morning do your regular routine as much as possible i know there's travel things going on but try to take out some time during that day to go for a walk to do some exercise to do something that would help you feel relaxed and in a better mindset that's another point we're just we're just skipping from points to points i know i said that but Maybe try to do something relaxing during that day. I was just talking to someone about like binging tactics. And she also is someone who does a lot of acting. Um, she does a lot of performances. And I told her like, what do you do before these performances? Because I'm sure you feel nervous. She says, I actually have a whole process. I do some yoga. Sometimes I do a whole crying exercise. Like I let myself cry. Sometimes I lay down and cry. And I do some high intensity movements to get my body warmed up. 
And I just like sat there in silence with her and I'm like, okay, but you still then go through the, with the performance despite feeling nervous, right? She was like, yes. And she's like, oh my God, I could apply that to binge eating. I'm like, yeah, you do the exact same thing with stage fright that you need to do with urges, right? And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure that some of you guys don't want to like lay down and cry, but there are practices you do every day where you feel nervous and you go through the situation anyway. Try to apply those for that day, for this Thanksgiving day and for the rest of your days. Do something that calms yourself down, that puts you in a good mental space and feed yourself properly throughout the day. Okay, next, eat mindfully. This is um, something that sounds obvious, but it's something that's often missed. Generally, what happens is people are like, oh yeah, yeah, eat mindfully, whatever that means. And they think it means like pay attention while you're eating, but it's a bit more than that. You want to actually sit down while you're eating. You know, make sure you're, I mean, you can, I understand it's the holidays, you like pick some food, but I'm going to suggest that trying to be really intentional with your eating during this day is going to be more helpful for you. You don't have to do that for the rest of your days, but really try hard that day to go all in on mindful eating and sit down at the dinner table with your family or friends or, or, or even if it's just you, like not everyone hangs out for Thanksgiving and does stuff, but sit down for that meal. Make sure you're not standing, running about doing errands. Make sure you've plated the food, make the food look nice, make it a whole event for yourself. Make sure you've actually microwaved it or put, made it hot and fresh and nice. Um, actually use a fork and napkin, right? And take proper bites and put your, put your fork down in between bites. Chew properly, take breaks in between bites, even though you might have the urge to start inhaling, start taking a bite. And then while you're chewing, have the next bite ready to go in front of your mouth and then eating it as soon as you have swallowed, right? Don't do that. And don't, you know, calm down when you start to feel that urgency to do that drop the fork for a little bit and breathe and take a break. Yes, this is difficult to do, especially if you've never practiced this before. Doesn't have to be perfect, but those simple things, when you actually start doing them, they really do help. A lot of us like to think that it is too complicated. It is too hard to eat mindfully. It's too hard to do these things. It's too hard to make it through an urge. And it is difficult, no doubt, but there are simple tactics that people often overlook that actually help tremendously in the moment. If you just put one of the things that I'm saying into practice um, during this day, that will help you tremendously. I'm giving you a whole bunch of tips that's overwhelming, but trying one of these things, such as mindful eating, will help you probably more than you realize. So give it a chance, all right? Give it a try. Secondly, with mindful eating, another thing people often miss is actually the mindset. So what are your, what are you thinking about when you're eating? Are you thinking about, oh my God, I shouldn't eat this. There's so many calories. I'm going to get so fat. I really want more, but I shouldn't have more. Oh my God. The food that I'm eating is almost over and I want more. Oh my goodness. Try to, that's going to be on no matter what, right? But try to think intentional thoughts on top of that, right? So you've got that in the background, Put those thoughts in the back seat for a minute. Treat them almost like a backseat driver. Give them a seatbelt, give them a blanket and be like, that's cool. Shh, it's fine. Notice that you're having those thoughts. Notice that they are just thoughts. You do not have to pay attention to them. And then think what you want to think on purpose, which is good and mindful thoughts are, what does this food taste like? This is so enjoyable. Mm, I love this food. Breathe in, taste the food, actually enjoy the experience, smell it, Right. Food is supposed to be an immersive, nice experience. It is supposed to be enjoyable. If you're eating things you hate, probably need to change it up a little bit. Actually pay attention with your mind. When you're thinking constantly about how the food's almost over, or how you shouldn't be eating it, it takes you out of the experience, kind of robs you of your joy while you're eating and almost makes you feel like you still haven't gotten enough or what you did get wasn't that enjoyable. And therefore you feel like you missed that food opportunity. You're more likely to feel a lot more satisfied if you're paying attention while eating and thinking thoughts of enjoyment and satisfaction while you're actually eating it. So really give those two things a try. Next, overeating is not a problem. Overeating is not a guaranteed thing for weight gain. Overeating also doesn't mean that you've ruined it or that you have messed up or you're disordered or anything. Normal people overeat. Normal people who actually have like fit bodies overeat on occasion and also, or like fit bodies, whatever that means to you, they overeat on occasion. Um, people that are athletes, they overeat on occasion. They totally indulge 
and have these experiences and they don't think of themselves as disordered. They just think of it as having a fun time and they move on. And a lot of people overeat on Thanksgiving and they do not blink an eye. They don't bat an eye about it. I think we have such drama about it because we think, oh, that overeating is letting go. It's it's once I make this okay, then I'm going to start overeating forever. I'm going to keep on continuing. I'm going to gain so much weight. That's not necessarily true. And I always ask people and they think like, well, if I let that go, then I'll keep on doing it. I'm like, do you want to keep on doing it? Do you want to keep on stuffing your stomach full to the max capacity, eating foods that don't feel very good to you 24 seven? Do you, is that something you desire? And I'm like, no. And I'm like, well, then why are you telling yourself that if you let this overeating slide one time that you will suddenly become this person that you are not even anywhere close to being? And it's such a disparity in our brain. It's like, if we, if we keep, if we let go of control just a little bit, then we will suddenly just fall apart. And that doesn't make any sense. It's not actually what you want. And stop telling yourself that you will somehow become that because it's quite the opposite. Um, overeating is something that most people do. It's a pretty normal thing to do. And you're not going to suddenly gain a bunch of weight from one day of overeating. Um, you can get away with quite a lot and it's actually quite an enjoyable experience sometimes. So let loose, refeed your body a little bit, get some surplus of calories. Your body will actually process it through. You will keep on going. And I promise you, it's not the end of the world. Consider what your danger hours are. Nice step. Um, now, typically what happens is you don't binge in front of your family um, or your friends. You usually go back later and do that. So no, kind of be on the lookout for what you're up to, kind of be on the lookout for wanting to go back later after dinner, the excuses you're giving yourself like, oh, I just want one slice of pie. So I'm going to get up at 12 a.m. to go get that slice of pie when no one is awake alone in the kitchen. Like that's a red alarm, right? That's a red flag. Um, another thing is like going to just pick just a little bit. Like I just want one taste, um, being avoidant, um, really typically like getting up when no one was around or like sneaking things to your room, something like that. Try to be aware of those behaviors. Um, if someone knows in your, uh, if some, if someone knows in your family or your friend group that you're hanging out with about your bulimia, try to lean on them for support. Try to actually talk to them about, Hey, like I'm going to try to really enjoy today, but today is hard for me. Um, and you're not, you're not my babysitter, but I would really just like to maybe lean on you. If I'm feeling a little bit bingy or I'm feeling these urges, can I come to you? Can I talk to you? And can you maybe give me some extra support today and be willing to talk with me about it? And I'm sure that if they are, um, they really care about you and they love you and you guys have an open relationship about it, then they're probably more likely going to be willing to help and be there for you. And also telling someone out loud, talking about it out loud with someone else, it's not necessarily going to hold you more accountable, but it does make you more aware of what you actually want to do and cement that idea in your head of, hey, we're doing this. Sometimes having someone else know helps you adhere to your goals more often. So really talking about that with someone else could help in more ways than one. But leaning on familiar support for binging behaviors would be really nice. And then also make quick decisions with food afterwards. So um if you are that person to typically go back, back um, down when downstairs to the kitchen, when everyone else has gone to bed, don't even let your mind go there, go to bed when everyone else goes to bed, brush your teeth, um, do all the routines you normally do, and then try your darndest to just stay in bed and stay there. Do not for any circumstances go back down. It's just not going to be a good thing for you. You know what it's going to lead to. Try not to listen to any excuse your brain gives you. And actually remember in those moments that you actually don't want to do that. Even in the moment, it feels like you want to, but it really, you don't want to do it long-term. And the you of two hours beforehand, or the you of two hours later, really won't want you to do that. It's just in those moments that you have to kind of ride that through and be willing to deal with the urge until it eventually goes away. And it will go away even if you don't fulfill that urge. Remember that you can have this food anytime you want. And I know that's such a cliche thing that everyone says around the holidays as advice. And I didn't really understand that. I, um, when I was going through bleeding, I was kind of like, cool. Yeah. I can have the food anytime I want. Not really. Um, like thanks for that bullshit advice basically is what I would think, but it really is true that you can have food, that food, any goddamn time you want, you can have it every single week, every single day, if you want to, you don't want to, because that wouldn't be super good for you. First of all, you'd feel like crap. 
Um, and then secondly, society says you only have it during this day. It's supposed to be a special occasion. But the main reason you don't feel like you can have it anytime you want is because you say that's not allowed. Like we cannot have that. We feel guilty if we do that. But really like you could want to, but you do not want to have it every anytime you want. And really go to the place of why exactly don't I have this every day? Is it just for the weight gain or is there actually health reasons that I don't want to have this? Is it actually nice to have it on occasion? And actually, do I have one happen more often? And could I make that a possible reality? Start to open up your mind to that possibility of, oh yeah, this isn't actually that special. I can have this anytime I want. I can make it anytime I want. And how often do I really want to do that? And get to that place of knowledge there. It actually is really good advice once you start thinking about it more often and let that soak in. Um, and then another food thing is you're allowed to give leftovers away. And I know that that's, some people would say, oh, that's disorder to like be hiding food or keeping food out of the house so that you don't eat it. But in the beginning stages of bulimia recovery, I will full-heartedly admit that I left, I, I removed some binge foods from my house. I didn't have ice cream. I didn't have cake. I didn't have like large quantities of sweet foods that I could just eat and eat and eat in my house. I didn't have peanut butter in my house either. And I like removed all those things. I still had some foods that were really tasty. Like I had, um, when I was trying to stop binging, I had, um, some chips and stuff like that, that I was able to have. I had like, uh, some, some bread and stuff like that. I had a food that I enjoyed, but I didn't have my most typical binge foods and actually was really helpful and got me to a place of more sanity. So it made it a lot easier for me not to binge. And eventually I brought those foods back in. It wasn't a, a permanent thing. Um, and it was very helpful. So for you, you can definitely put giveaway leftovers if you want. And I know some people are like, well, my family members would be disappointed, but First of all, you could communicate if you have an open relationship with these family members about your bulimia that actually I just, can we please just get rid of this food and talk with them about it? I know you feel guilty for that, but if you discuss that with them, they might have like a place that they can put the food so they, they can still have some um, and be understanding of that, of that or um, be willing to give it up and realize that you and your sanity and getting through bulimia is probably more important. And they can also, they can have another turkey some other time. It sounds like a ridiculous, selfish request, but it really is like, if someone said that to you, someone said like, Hey, I am recovering from alcohol. Um, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an alcoholic. It would be really helpful if you removed the alcohol from the house, you would be willing to do that for them. You would maybe find it kind of inconvenient because you don't have a problem having wine in the house, but you'd be willing to make sacrifices for them for a short amount of time or for that amount of time. Uh, so consider that and looking at, looking at it from that point of view, but you can get rid of leftovers. Um, and sometimes having that stuff around for a long amounts of time, like you don't actually need that. It was fun for a day, but cool. Like let's move on with our life. And you are totally allowed to do that. And that kind of brings me into my next point. You're allowed to do what you want to do. You're allowed to eat what you want. You're allowed to um, put what you want into your body. You're allowed to do whatever you want to do on Thanksgiving day and any day of the year. Uh, so don't be really conscious of like people pushing food on you, feeling like you have to meet up to expectations of people, feeling like you have to do what everyone else wants to do, that you have to eat what they, what they're eating or what they say you eat. You always get to choose with when it comes to your body and your mind. So don't let yourself be pressured into that respect your boundaries, respect what works for you. I know certain people do actually like to not have sugar or um, flour in their recovery. Um, and believe me, recovering that's worked for people. For me, that didn't work, but uh, I, I've never found a way to like not have sugar and flour in my life. And I seem to be able to handle it. I seem to be able to handle it without binging and purging. But some people are like that. And if you're that person out there listening, I just want to give you permission that, hey, if that works for you, then respect your boundaries on Thanksgiving day and you don't have to have the freaking pie. You're not missing out on life because you do not have the pie. And maybe that's something else that brings me into the next topic. This again, this podcast is just like rapid fire, but there's a lot of things to go over for holidays. Um, holidays aren't all about the food. There's definitely an enjoyment factor of food for holidays, but I want you to think about what exactly do you want to enjoy about the holidays that's not food related. It's not just about the pie. The pie will be good. It'll be tasty, cool, whatever you guys have on, on Thanksgiving, whatever your favorite dish is. But there's so many other things to enjoy about the holidays. One, being enjoying time with your family. Second, for me, is usually relaxation, like having some free time. I'm someone who 
needs a lot of rest. Like I feel like it just needs tons of rest. And so holidays are a great time for me to recuperate, take longer naps, sleep in and then just read books that I enjoy fiction books and move on with my life. So that's, what's important to me about holidays. Gratitude is also another thing that's important for me to recognize around holidays. It's a good time when you're taking a break to have reflection. So those things are all important to me. The food is just like a a few minutes of pleasure that I really get. um, That's enjoyable. And like spending time with people making those dishes is actually more fun than the actual dishes themselves. So maybe that's what you enjoy. Then maybe that's why you so look forward to that slice of pie your grandma makes because you like to make it with her and she tells stories about it and it makes her happy. Like those are all the things that are probably more important and you want to get clear on what exactly you're looking forward to and why exactly you're looking forward to that pie um, or that dish or whatever. But you don't have to have the pie. (laughs) Back to my original point. And the pie is not the most important thing about Thanksgiving. It's actually many more things that you probably are looking forward to enjoying about Thanksgiving. Now, this is the final, now this is the final thing I'm going to say about Thanksgiving and advice, but this has to do with your family. And I talked to a lot of clients that they, they are used to repressing their feelings around their family and actually their family um, causes them a lot of it can be very triggering for their eating disorder, um, causes them a lot of stress, a lot of pain. Um, maybe they have past relationships, maybe their childhood wasn't that good with their family. Maybe their parents say awful things to them when they're around tons of things, or maybe their sibling, there's a lot of toxic behavior there. Who knows? I want to say this very clearly. You have to take care of yourself first and You can love your family, but not always want to hang out with them or see them. And coming from someone who has seen a lot of toxic family behavior uh, with their clients, um, sometimes like you have to take care of yourself for first in order to heal. And you don't owe your family any of your time um, if you don't want to spend time with them. Like you shouldn't be hanging out with them because you feel like you have to. You should be hanging out with them because you feel like you want to. And just because you are blood related to someone or have hung out with them for a long time or something like that, doesn't mean you owe owe them a second of your time. And that's not to be callous, but if someone is abusive, if someone's, if someone brings out the worst in you and they make you stressed, they make you anxious, they make you more depressed, then you've got to question like, why are you hanging out with them? Is it out of um, be like an obligation. And would you put that on anyone else? Would you say, if someone felt that way, hanging out with you for whatever weird reason, would you say, I think you should hang out with me? Um, you probably would want to resolve the situation. Be like, why do you feel that way? Oh my goodness. But you would be like, okay, if this is really bad for you, then please don't do that. Um, so you've got to give that courtesy to yourself as well. I'm not saying like ignore your families and don't spend time with them and cut them out of your life, but assess your family situation. And if you're dreading Thanksgiving, you're dreading spending time with your family. Um, and be, especially if you feel like I'm going to, all my triggers are going to come out. They're going to be abusive. They're going to yell at me. They're going to, it's going to be an awful time. I'm going to have a panic attack. Then really consider whether you want to hang out with them and why or why not. You know, it's totally up to you what you choose, but you don't have to, you don't owe anyone your time, even if you're blood related to them. That's not how that works. Um, and also remember that if you do choose to hang out with them, but those people sometimes bring up things that really trigger you, you're allowed to speak your mind. I'm not saying like start screaming in the middle of the dinner table and like calling them a bunch of names. You can be civil, but you can still share your honest feelings. And I know with clients that repress their feelings around their families, that's when the binging and purging comes up because they kind of hold in what they actually want to say and they hold in all the stuff that they feel like they've been hurt by and then suddenly they decide to find themselves binging the turkey and the stuffing later at night and freaking out or binging after they had a long session or talk with their mom who um, always feels like it's their fault whatever they're doing right just merely speaking your truth and being honest while not trying to blame people but being like you're when you say that I feel this way actually when you say that I think this, and actually that's not what I believe. Um, Doesn't mean that you have to change their opinion, but you're at least telling them how you feel. That can be really freeing and helpful. That's going to take some bravery on your part. It's uncomfortable to tell people things that you know they don't necessarily want to hear, 
but it can be really, really good for um, releasing stress and not binging. So that's what I'm going to leave you guys with. Kind of a sour note to end on, but it is a real problem. Otherwise, I hope you have a really amazing time with your family. I hope you have a good weekend as well this weekend and for prepping. If you want to take the podcast episode um, deeper, because I know I went over a lot of points today, you can download the worksheet in the description below and go over with the notes. Um, and there'll, there'll be a whole list of questions to take these concepts deeper and, deeper and help you reflect. So you can grab that. Um, but otherwise, I appreciate you guys for listening. Thank you. There'll be a Q&A out next week. Um, and I just hope you have an enjoyable Thanksgiving and that whatever you're spending time on that day, even if it's not Thanksgiving, um, I hope you get a chance to relax and appreciate things in your life that you don't normally appreciate. That you look around and are grateful for you first and foremost and how much you've achieved in your life and then all the things around you and all the opportunities ahead of you because they are there um, you just have to keep working towards them so anyway at this point i think i'm rambling i'm gonna let you guys go thank you if you made it this far have a lovely weekend never give up on yourself my friend bye hey if you like this episode you have to come check out the binge breakers recovery course if you're trying to recover from bulimia and you're sick of doing it alone and you feel like you've tried a lot of traditional therapies and it's not working with you come join the course go to bingebreakers.com recovery course